Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. I hope is my voice loud and clear for everybody, doctor? Shobana, Sana. No, sir. Is it audible? No, sir. Oh my God. Okay. Now is it better? Is it better now? Is my voice better now? Uh, Shobana, am I audible? No, sir. Oh. Uh, is it breaking? Is my voice breaking? Uh, Gita, good evening. Yeah, Gita, Sana, Shobana, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Good, good, good. Sure. Yeah. So let's make the great beginning every day evening. We all meet up. We have an opportunity to uh, pick up around eight to 10 topics. Then um, there are at least 15, 20 points that you need to know about each of these topics. I first do a quick revision for you because I know that most of the times you won't come prepared. At least now, you, we all can read, we all can remember, and we all can revise. So that is the plan. Once more, please give me reassurance that my voice is loud and clear for all of you. Am I audible? Gita, Sana, Shobna. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. All right. So today, let's discuss a bit on surgery. I will pick up six topics today and 20 points about each of them. And uh, you all are going to revise along with me all these points. Now, diverticulosis. What is the most common site of diverticulosis? It is colon. 90% cases of the diverticulosis occur in the sigmoid colon. Colon basically has an ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, etc., etc. So it is a sigmoid colon. And uh, in the small intestine, what is the most common place where diverticulosis can occur? Typically, it is the second part of the duodenum, which is the most common site, which you need to remember. 
Now, what are the complications of diverticulosis? Diverticulum is a out pouch from the wall of the intestine, all of you know. A diverticulosis can cause fistula, it can cause hemorrhage, intestinal obstruction, peritonitis, etc. etc. Now, whenever diverticulosis lead to fistula, obviously sigmoid colon is the most common location for diverticulum. So, what is the commonest type of fistula formed in diverticulosis? It is the visicocolic fistula that is between the bladder and the colon. You get a fistula and that leads to the development of pneumaturia. That is, there is air into the urine, feces into the urine that can enter. So that is called pneumaturia. So visicocolic fistula. So what is fistula? So if you look at the, uh, if, uh, what is a diverticular? Is it acquired, congenital, one of the favorite questions. Typically, diverticula of the colon are acquired herniation of the colonic mucosa. And that colonic mucosa will be protruding to the circular muscle coat at the point where the blood vessels penetrate the colonic wall. So that is the story of diverticula of colon, which are basically acquired. Most of the times, colonic diverticula are all acquired. Can anybody tell me what is the same striad of diverticulosis? Can anybody tell Amrita, Gita, Sana, Shobana, Sneha, Sirisha, anybody? What is same striad of diverticulosis? Diverticulosis, the same strand. Carter Jenner syndrome? No, no. Same strand of diverticulosis. Bronchiectasis. Oh, bronchiectasis a little far. Okay. Diverticulosis, gallstones, and hiatus hernia. These three are called same strand. Once more, tell Gita what is same strand? Gallstones, diverticulum, uh, hmm. hernia. Hiatus hernia. Hiatus hernia. Ha. Hiatus hernia. These three are called uh, diverticulosis. Same strand is what you have to basically remember. All right. Now, always when you look at the colon, there is a right side of the colon and there is a left side of the colon. In general, right-sided diverticula are more common than the left-sided diverticula. So the sigmoid colon belongs to the left side and 90% cases of diverticulosis occur in the sigmoid colon. Still, overall, if you take right versus left, right-sided diverticular are more common than the left-sided. Then what are the predisposing factors for diverticulosis? A low-fiber diet, a low-fiber diet is uh, a very common thing that predisposes. That's the reason if you take uh, the Western society, let us say, uh, uh, if you go to America, Europe, etc., they eat a lot of meat. Because of that, diverticulosis is more common in the Western society, which has got very little fiber eating habit, is what you need to remember. So, how do you treat diverticulosis? In all the acute cases of diverticulosis, we do a flexible sigmoidoscopy. Do we do? No. Don't do. When diverticulitis, diverticulosis means simply presence of diverticular. Diverticulitis means inflammation. 
whenever acute diabetic colitis is there, don't try to put a sigmoidoscope. Don't try to put a colonoscope. It is contraindicated because there's a risk of colonic perforation. Then if there is obstruction or perforation, edema, adhesion, then we do what is called Hartman's procedure is the operation of choice. Once more, take it as a small homework. Go back to the surgery textbook. Look at what is meant by Hartman's procedure. What are the indications for Hartman's procedure? What do we do in Hartman's procedure? So every one hour of your interaction with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj, every day evening, uh, Amrita is saying, Sir, I am unable to see the video version of the class. No video. Video will cause deviation. It requires a lot of bandwidth. PowerPoints and everything is very boring. Audio. Audio is very interesting. A group of friends come together, right? Gita, Sana, Shobana, Sirisha, Sneha. And uh, we exchange few points. Around 100 points we discuss. And then uh, that is how every day evening 6 o'clock, religiously we all meet. Right? So please don't forget to tune yourself to this uh, Zoom session. Um, and shortly we are launching an app. Most likely tonight, we are launching an app called Wongo. Wongo is a social audio app. So there also we can form audio chat room and you will get notification. You can join that. A lot of toppers are going to come and they will also engage you into this kind of subject revision sessions. It will be very interesting. Wongo app. Um, Tonight we are launching, tomorrow I will tell you. Once Wongo app comes now, instead of doing in the Zoom, we all can meet up on the Wongo app every day and uh, we can have discussions. Many more subject revision discussions like this. No video, no texting, only audio. And uh, in the Wongo app, we can also share notes, handwritten notes, uh, images, um, video and all that we can share into the gallery that you all can see. For example, I'm teaching now diverticulosis. I can be on the Mongo app in the audio room gallery. I will put up one radiograph for a CT image. You all can do that and we can continue having audio conversation, right? So that is the plan. So doctor, how do you manage whenever Diverticula, diverticulosis, diverticulitis is there, is one of the very, very um, important question. So Hartman's procedure is the one which you need to basically remember. So that is all in brief about uh, diverticulosis and diverticulitis, um, which you need to basically remember, all right? Now, doctor, let us go to some of the interesting uh, uh, concepts. Uh, now, I want to quickly check how much you are remembering the, what all that we discussed earlier. Uh, we discussed a few things in anesthesia, inhalational anesthetics. Gita and everybody was there during the session. So I want to quickly check how much you are uh, remembering. Uh, we discussed inhalation anesthetics and uh, intravenous anesthetics. Let us quickly pick up 10 muzzle relaxants, which are the favorite topic of the examiner. First, I will tell a few points about this muzzle relaxants. After that, I will fire questions and you need to give me answers. So basically, muzzle relaxants are divided into depolarizing and non-depolarizing muzzle relaxants. All of you know very well. So what is meant by non-depolarizing mother relaxant? A non-depolarizing mother relaxant will be 
a competitive inhibitor competitive inhibitor to the uh, um, succinyl choline so it will instead of succinyl choline a non depolarizing muddle reaction will go and occupy the location so that succinyl choline has no place to i mean sorry acetyl choline has no place place to go in bind so the non depolarizing reactions muddle reactions are divided into long acting intermediate acting short acting so what are long acting non depolarizing muddle reactions which are competitive and i mean inhibitors of the acetyl choline receptors pan curonium doxacurium picurium and bitubo curare this four are called long acting whereas vecuronium atracurium rocuronium they are all intermediate acting mivacurium rapacuronium these two are short acting then depolarizing agents are what they are non competitive non competitive so succinyl choline and uh, decamethonium they are shortest acting they are not competitive but just like acetyl choline depolarizes succinyl choline also will go and depolarize and will not permit the acetyl choline to depolarize any more unless acetyl choline goes and depolarizes it uh muscle doesn't contract but succinyl choline will go before acetyl choline and depolarize it so that it is not available for any more further depolarization that's how it lead to prevention of muscle contraction and lead to muscle relaxation all right now quickly tell me doctor what are the short acting non depolarizing agents come on quickly tell me what are two agents geeta Mivacurium, mivacurium, ropacurium, ropacurium. Very good. Mivacurium and ropacurium. Then, what are long-acting non-depolarizing agents? D-tubocurarin, doxacurium, uh, pancurium. Very good. And pipecurium, pipecurium. Right. Between non-depolarizing and depolarizing, which is non-competitive. depolarizing very good decamethonium is an example of non competitive depolarizing very good very good very good now there are totally about 10 muscle relaxants one to points about each of them galamine b tubo curare succinyl choline pancuronium vecuronium mivacurium atracurium cisantracurium and rocuronium totally 10 you need to uh, totally 9 you need to know one to points about each of them galamine what does it do so basically galamine is known to lead to vagal blockage vagus is blocked it is not only a muscle relaxation but vagus is blocked there is a special property you need to remember then galamine 100% is renally excreted and uh, galamine crosses placenta that's the reason it is contraindicated in pregnancy renal failure and also in myasthenia gravis then d tubo curare if i ask you what is the muscle relaxant of choice in obstetrics in pregnancy obstetrics your answer should be d tubo curare d tubo curare has a special property it lead to ganglionic blockade and also very good for arterial or a vascular subject that's what you need to remember but every muscle relaxant you need to worry about histamine release 
Dechubo curarin of all mother relaxin causes highest amount of histamine relief. So that way it leads to anaphylaxis. Dechubo curarin, just like galamine, it is contraindicated in myasthenia gravis. Next is succinylcholine. The mother relaxant with the short, fastest onset of action, succinylcholine. The mother relaxant shortest acting, succinylcholine. The mother relaxant with both vagal and ganglion stimulation is succinylcholine. And how is succinylcholine metabolized? It is not the liver, it is not the kidney, it is the pseudocholine esterase. There are certain communities in India. Uh, typically, they have genetically the deficiency of pseudocholine esterase. In those people, if you happen to give succinylcholine, the succinylcholine won't be metabolized. That's the reason. Ordinary people after anesthesia weans out, muscle relaxant action weans out, and their diaphragm comes back into action. But in these people who have congenital deficiency of pseudocholine esterase, in them, if you give succinylcholine, you have to be careful because their diaphragm, which got relaxed because of the muscle relaxant action, will not normalize a longer duration. That's the reason we have to give them ventilatory support, unlike other non other people. Then always you should know what are the contraindications of succinylcholine. Spinal cord injury, burns, cerebral palsy, acute intermittent porphyria, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, malignant hyperthermia. In all these scenarios. Succinylcholine is contraindicated, is what you need to remember. Then, few comments on pancuronia. Just close your eyes, relax yourself, just listen, and then get as many points you can get into your brain. When you are all studying in a group, then you will remember longer. That is the secret of. Studying together every day, evening. All right, doctor. Now, pancuronium. It is longest stacking, just like succinylcholine is shortest stacking, fastest stacking. All right. So, pancuronium is longest stacking. It is the one which is preferred in hypovolemic shock. Both kidney and liver excrete it. And it leads to maximum vagal block. That is the reason it will lead to severe tachycardia, hypertension. It can lead to cardiovascular instability, renal failure. All these are the problems of pancuronium. Then vecuronium. Why do you want to remember? If I ask you, what is the most cardio stable muscle relaxing? Vecuronium. And vecuronium is metabolized by the liver. Then mivacurium. Succinylcholine is called short acting. But mivacurium is ultra short acting, non depolarizing muscle relaxant. The duration is only 12 to 18 minutes. That's the reason it is given as a continuous infusion, ultra short acting. Unless you give it like a continuous infusion, if you simply push it into the blood, like a bolus, before it reaches the heart, it may get metabolized before it gets distributed. Right? Then, just like succinylcholine is metabolized by pseudocholine esterase, even mivacurium is also is, uh, metabolized by pseudocholine esterase. But uh, there is one difference, remember, succinylcholine is shortest acting, mivacurium is ultra shortest acting. But the succinylcholine has the fastest onset of action of all the muscle relaxin. But mivacurium, mivacurium typically has a slow onset. 
that is a disadvantage with mevacuum so it is ultra short acting right onset is very slow and uh, once onset is there very short very short acting ultra short acting then comes atracurium one of the favorite questions of the examiner atracurium is metabolized by hoffman's elimination atracurium is metabolized by ester hydrolysis and it can produce one product called lord and of sign atracuriums metabolite by hoffman's degradation is hoffman's degradation means non enzymatic degradation not dependent on kidney not dependent on liver it is by the esterase which hydrolyzes it so 70% is hoffman degradation 30% is ester hydrolysis but atracuriums metabolite is called lord and of sign lord and of sign can lead to development of seizures but if i ask you a question which is the most likely and safe in renal disease safe in liver disease your answer should be atracuria then cisatracurium cisatracurium is four times more potent than atracurium cisatracurium causes less amount of histamine release 100% half men elimination and the lord and assign that lead to seizures lord and assign levels are much lower than its sister bacteria then comes rock curonium the fastest concept non depolarizing muscle relaxing is rock curonium but it is the least potent non depolarizing muscle relaxing it can cause pain on the iv injection disadvantages and rock curonium is eliminated by liver so these are the points you need to know doctor 10 times 20 times 30 times but you need to do the revision now anita quickly tell me the answer what is the most cardio stable muscle relaxant anybody vecuronium vecuronium beautiful vecuronium Which is ultra short acting, non depolarizing muscle relaxant? Mevacuronium. Mevacuronium, beautiful. What is the muscle relaxant of choice in obstetrics? Dibuprofen. Correct. Dibuprofen. And uh, how is galamine metabolized? kidney liver or pseudocholinesterase galamine kidney liver or pseudocholinesterase which one eliminates galamine come on kidney Doctor. very good kidney 100% elimination by kidney tell me two other relaxant pseudocholinesterase causes elimination Succinyl good. Meva curium. Meva curium, very good. And Hoffman's degradation is a method of elimination. Hoffman's degradation is the method of elimination. Atra curium. Good. This atra curium. This atra curium, very good. And. Uh, Why seizure sucker because of atracurium? What is the reason for seizures if you give atracurium? Lord denosine is the metabolite produced by the metabolism of atracurium. Which is the non-depolarizing muscle relaxant which has the fastest onset of action? Succinyl choline. Non-depolarizing muscle relaxant with fastest onset. Rocuronium. Very good. Succinyl choline is what type, doctor? Depolarizing or non-depolarizing? 
deportation to deportation right then um, finally tell me all the contra indications you remember for sarcoidal colony spinal cord palsy good burns hmm cerebral palsy hmm lucian muscular dystrophy hmm malignant hyperthermia super and acute intermittent porphyria huh? and 48 to 9 month 48 hours to 9 months after any injury we should not give all right doctor so that is all you are now champions in the topic of uh, muscle relaxants doctor so that is how you should uh, become better 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 earlier i have uh, uh, i have uh, discussed about intravenous anesthetics inhalation anesthetics etc etc now let us quickly discuss a bit about pediatric psychiatric pediatric psychiatric now so 48 hours to 9 months or yeah for for yeah for yeah should not be given if somebody had any uh, trauma muscle injury starting from 48 hours up to 9 months okay now what is the part of the child which is called concrete thinking stage Two to seven years. When can a child understand the abstract ideas and conceptual thinking? Seven to eleven years. And uh, what is the most common chromosomal cause of the um, severe mental retardation? Down syndrome. And what is the most common mental disorder that you find in the children? it is neurosis neurosis is what you need to remember and uh, we all know idiots morons etc but what are those children who are called termites termites are mentally gifted children whose iq is more than 150 then in autism there is a triad which you need to remember which is called canner's canner's autistic triad so what is canner's autistic triad autistic aloofness speech and language disorder and obsessive disorder for shameless obsessive desire for shameless these three combination is called canner's autistic triad autistic aloofness speech or language disorder plus obsessive desire for shameless mrityu death fear of death most common in what pediatric age at the age of 5 years it is most common now what is the age where opposition temper tantrums defiance they are all very common in the children between 18 months to 3 years is what you need to remember now most children will get a bladder control during day and also by night by what age by 5 years by what age can a child start identifying whether it is a boy or girl 18 months of age and uh, by what age the child mentally knows that he is a boy or girl and from then on which he will strongly building up that only by 30th month if uh, by 30th month that is two and a half years if a child uh, thinks that he is not a boy a boy doesn't think he is not a boy but a girl and start wearing the girls dresses you can't change their mind by 30th month gender constancy which is resistant to change will develop 
then earlier we used to classify idiots, imbeciles and morons. That was actually a older classification. So mental age of two years or less is called idiot, two to seven years is called imbecile, seven to twelve years is called moron. Now most of the psychiatric disorder are the more common in boys or girls, they are more common in males. Guys are more uh, psychos. ADHD, conduct disorder, tics, amnuses, autism, they are all more in the more in the males. But mutism is a condition which is more common in the girls. That's what you need to basically remember. Now let us talk about autism. Around uh, 10 points, let us talk about autism. As I told you, Doctor, every day we will have about 100 to 120 points revision together in this one number session. Autism. Autism is a self occupied, it exists in community and pseudo community. It is a pervasive developmental disorder, autism. It's more common in males, usually onset, one of the favorite density of examiner for autism, less than two and a half years. So what are the features of autism? Marked impairment in reciprocal, social and interpersonal relation. Autistic child will be going to the end of the fence in the playground. He will be taking one small stick and continuously keep hitting the fence. So he has a very poor interpersonal interaction. While all other kids are playing football, this kid will be going and standing on the side of uh, the edge of the um, football court and uh, keep take one small branch and keep hitting. So it is marked impairment of reciprocal social and interpersonal interaction. Similarly, language, communication, impact, abnormal behavior, mental retardation. Sometimes epilepsy plus autism can coexist. That's called idiot savant syndrome. Idiot savant syndrome. Even there, the EEG also can be abnormal. So epilepsy plus autism is called idiot savant syndrome. Is yes, what you need to remember. So, what is the cause of autism? There are a few theories. Perinatal insult of central nervous system is one reason. Raised serotonin levels is the neurotransmitter implicated. Serotonin. Another cause of autism. So, how do you treat autism? Behavior therapy and drugs like. Fenfluramine, haloperidol, they are the ones which are used in autism, is what you need to remember. Now, what is the difference between autism and Asperger's syndrome? In Asperger's syndrome, language is normal. That is a fundamental difference. Now, let me check how alert you are, how much you are listening. All right. Now, quickly tell me, what is Scanner's autistic triad? Who is going to tell me? Autistic aloofness, mm. speech and language disorder, Correct. obsessive desire, for shameless, for shameless, all right. Now, what is the common age when autism onset? Less than two and a half years. Very good. What is when the idiot savant syndrome? Epilepsy plus autism. Very good. And what is the main difference between autism and Asperger? In Asperger, the language is normal. Wonderful. And what is the neurotransmitter implicating autism? Neurotransmitter? Yes, Neha. 
increased serotonin levels are seen. Very good. Increased serotonin levels are what you see in autism. Very good. Then comes conduct behavior. Conduct behavior means bullying others. So the basic rights of others are violated and rules are not followed. In the society we want to live means there are certain basic principles. We should not disturb the other's peace, right? And uh, typically, conduct disorder is seen in childhood or adolescence. And uh, mainly treatment is multi-systemic treatment. School, family, individual, all these things we need to integrate to manage the conduct disorder. Then comes ADHD. Attention Deficit Hyperkinetic Disorder, ADHD. It is also more common in males. As I told you, know, the only thing which is more common in females is mutism. Mutism is the only thing which is more common in females. So ADHD commonly starts before the age of seven years. So these are the two favorite MCQs you should remember, Doctor. Autism before two and a half years, ADHD before seven years. ADHD, there is a poor attention span, hyperactivity, impulsivity, moving about here and there, excessive talking. They are all the important uh, features. Now, in this context, we need to know. Three terms, terminologies look very similar, but there is a difference. What is the difference between inattention, hyperactivity, impulsivity? You should know the differences. Inattention. The person does not listen when spoken directly. <laughs> that is inattention. Hyperactivity means he leaves the seat in the classroom. And impulsivity means he feels impulsive waiting for his turn to talk. I want to talk. I want to have the mic. That is impulsivity. So inattention, hyperactivity, impulsivity. Hyperactivity means he quickly leaves from the classroom. Impulsivity, every time teacher says, who want to answer? Raju want to answer because there is some tension happening in his heart that he want to answer. Right? Right or wrong doesn't matter. Inattention means Raju is sleeping already when the teacher is talking. That is inattention. Now, the people with inattention have a difficulty in sustaining in the play or in the task that they pick up. They have difficulty to sustain. Whereas hyperactivity, they often run and climb excessively. Then impulsive people will try to intrude others, disturb a conversation or a game. That is impulsive nature. Similarly, the people who have inattention, they forget their daily activities, time to do homework, etc. People with inattention, they do not follow instructions. They have difficulty to organize the task, talks. So these are all the features which you need to remember. So that is all the story of ADHD that you need to remember for the tomorrow's exam. Now, Doctor, let us quickly talk about mental retardation. One of the favorite questions is, what is the IQ of a moron, IQ of a imbecile, IQ of a idiot? 0 to 25 is idiot, 25 to 50 is imbecile, 51 to 70 is more all, which you need to remember. Now, there are certain disorders, they have a very high IQ, remember. There are some disorders, the children will have high IQ. Those who have retinoblastoma, myopia, even in our school days, no? somebody is wearing uh, thick glasses, means they are brilliant uh, people. People who have asthma, high IQ and high serum uric acid levels, high IQ. So retinoblastoma, myopia, asthma, high serum uric acid, high IQ. 
Now, what are the three most common cause of mental retardation, doctor? You should remember Down's syndrome, fragile X syndrome, and fetal alcohol syndrome. But if I ask you a favorite question of the examiner, most common cause of the mental retardation overall, your answer should be Down syndrome. Most common genetic cause of mental retardation, your answer should be Down syndrome. But most common inherited cause of mental retardation, that is, there's a trick there. Genetic cause is not equal to inherited cause. Most common inherited cause of mental retardation is fragile X syndrome. Most common genetic cause of mental retardation is trisomy 21. That is, Down syndrome is what you have to emphatically remember for the tomorrow's exam. So, doctor, with that, we are come to almost the end of the today's evening. I wish you all a wonderful dashara and uh, enjoy a great time. Every day we should study, doctor. That's the only way you become better, confident. And uh, every time I get time, I try to spend time with you to do revision of around 100 points. Shortly, Wongo app is getting launched tonight. I will send you the Wongo app link in the Google Play Store. And then there are so many audio rooms. A lot of my students who are the need PG toppers, they said that they will all come and then conduct a lot of revision sessions where everyone can simply join a room and then we can have a discussion, a quick revision, a little ventilation, question answers, quizzing and all that live audio, right? Wongo app. So quickly tell me two points, doctor, before we say goodbye. What are the most common age of onset of autism? Less than 200 years. Good. ADHD? Before seven years. Very good. And uh, most common inherited cause of mental retardation? Fragile X syndrome. The most common genetic cause of mental retardation? Down syndrome. Good. And tell me four subset of people who have high IQ in the children. Asthma. Yeah. Asthma. Asthma. Yeah. Yes. Increase serum uric acid levels. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And uh, just quickly give me a feedback. I, I strongly believe no video, only audio. Anytime informally we all meet together and do this kind of revision more frequently to keep you motivated for exams. Are you liking this or do you have any suggestions? Anita, you are a very good critic. Always I look for Anita's comments on the Google Play Store. Yeah. Tell me, Anita, any, any better uh, uh, way that we can meet up? Or do you, do you think audio is superior and good or uh, video is needed? Anybody can give a comment? All right. So thank you very much for this wonderful evening and uh, we will meet once more tomorrow. Good night.